To start things off, we're going to take a look at how we can set up a testing environment for us to be able to um, try out all these different techniques that we're going to be using for um, Android vulnerability testing. This sort of setup is going to be something that will be able to be used with any sort of application that you're um, trying to test or do vulnerability analysis on. Uh, most applications are going to work in emulators through Android Studio. So if you don't have an actual Android device, you'll be able to access it through Android Studio to be able to at least emulate it. So you can download Android Studio from uh, developer.android.com backslash studio, this URL right here. And you're just going to go ahead and download the Android Studio version that corresponds to your operating system version. In this case, I'm using Windows. So once that's downloaded, you're going to get this application that you'll be able to run. And essentially, we'll just walk through the installation in this video, and I'll demonstrate how we can set up some emulators that we'll be able to utilize throughout these videos. Uh, the Android Studio IDE is also going to come with a lot of different tools that are very valuable for us um, that will allow us to interact with our emulators and our applications. So we're going to go ahead and hit Next. We want to get Android Studio and the Android Virtual Devices, so make sure both of these are checked up. It will take up uh, 2.3 gigs of space. Uh, it doesn't really matter where you install it to, just install it wherever you would usually install your stuff. And then hit on install and it will go through the installation process. So once this installation process is complete, you'll have the Android toolkit that's um, like ADB and those sort of tools that we'll be using throughout this. And as well, you'll have access to write your own code as well as run emulators. So if you ever want to test specific concepts, Android Studio is a good way to do it because you're able to actually write code inside of it. Um, in addition to this, you'll have some emulators set up and you'll be able to access and work with those. So uh, we'll discuss a bit about working with emulators as well to get an idea of that. And that will be sort of in future videos as well. So once this is completed, we can hit next and finish to launch Android Studio. So now it will ask you um, whether you want to import any settings or not. Um, in this case, I do have an older install that I can import from, or I could choose to not import settings. Uh, for your first time, you probably won't have to import anything at all. Uh, so in this case, again, because I had an older installation, it's going to ask me about things with system files, and I can sort of delete those directories just to clear up some of the data that's there. And then from here, we'll launch Android Studio. Now, launching Android Studio will take a little bit of time. Um, it's, it's, a, it's an application that typically... Um, is a little bit slow, I guess you could say, on a lot of computers. Um, it really depends on your computer. It might take a little bit of time to actually boot up to begin with, so don't be alarmed if it takes some time to start up. See, so once you get here, we'll load in the components, we'll load in the modules, and then once this is done, we'll be able to access what we're really looking to get to, which is the emulators. Now, I don't necessarily think that you have to um, install all of Android Studio in order to get to the emulators, but I think it's good to have the whole thing available. Just that way you're able to um, have all of the features that come with Android Studio because there's a lot of helpful stuff inside of it. So you'll see that you'll load into the Android Studio page. Um, yours might not look exactly like mine because mine has a, a current like application that's being developed. So um, yours might look slightly different. However, you should have all these toolbars available to you. And the main toolbar that we're interested in is this one here, which is the AVD Manager. Um, if you don't have access to it through here, I believe we're able to get access it, to it through the view. Uh, there's a few different tool windows that are available inside of here. And you just want to make sure that each of your like toolbar and navigation bar and main menu and status bar are all enabled so that you're able to access this. When you click on this, what it will do is it will load up a page that will show all of our Android virtual devices. And you see in this case, I have none available, which means that I can just create a new virtual device in this case. So these virtual devices will have a little bit of customization. You'll essentially have access to be able to create things that mimic the hardware of any of the Google devices. So you see that there's phones, there's TV, there's um, the tablets, the watch OSs, the automotive OSs as well. So you can emulate any of those. Um, and you can pick really any of these that you like. Um, let's just say, I'll, I'll pick a Pixel 3 for this example. And you'll see inside of here, there'll be a whole bunch of different operating systems that you can pick. And you'll have to download them the first time that you want to utilize them. But you'll see on here, you can see like which version it is. So there's like Android 10, Android 9, Android 8.1. So you can really pick whatever Android version you'd like. Um, for this one, we'll just use Android 9.0 because I have it downloaded and available. Um, there aren't really too many major operating system differences when we're working with uh, vulnerability analysis of applications. But um, in general, you just sort of want to pick operating systems that are supported still. So um, whatever supported by the application you're looking to pen, pen test would be what you're picking out of here. But um, in this case, we'll just pick 9.0 for this example. 
and you see we'll be able to give it a name. So I'm gonna call mine uh, pixel three vulnerability analysis, just to give it like a unique name so I know what it is. And we can customize other details about it, such as like the startup orientations and like the performance pieces. Usually I just leave these all as default and click finish. And now we'll have the device available to us. So you see from here, we can just click on the play button and this will actually launch the device for us to be able to use. So let's go ahead and try that and let it run. Um, again, it might take a few minutes for it to launch. Uh, the emulators as well tend to be a little bit slow to start up, but once things are started up, then it starts to run pretty well and you'll be able to um, like work with them relatively flawlessly depending on how fast your computer is. I think most modern computers would be able to run uh, emulators fairly well. Um, of course, emulators aren't really computationally intensive for the phones because the phones themselves don't use a huge amount of hardware comparative to computers. But yeah, again, your mileage may vary depending on what kind of computer you're using. And just while this is loading here, I'll also note that if you have an Android device, you can utilize it um, for this testing as well. Um, the reason why I use emulators myself is because we're gonna be installing purposefully vulnerable applications onto these devices. So we don't really wanna do that on a live device. We mostly wanna do that on emulators so that we aren't like impacting the performance of our actual devices themselves. But if you do wanna utilize it, um, you can simply just plug in your USB device and then you'll have to um, enable USB debugging, which I'll talk about in a future video, to be able to actually get onto the device through ADB. And then from there, you'll be able to follow along just as if you were using an emulator. So just keep in mind, you don't necessarily always have to use the emulators. Um, you can use things such as devices as well. So those will work too. So we can tell that this is working and running because uh, the size on the disk is increasing. Um, as the emulator launches, the size on the disk will slightly increase. I think usually they end up taking about like nine or 10 gigs. And then as you install more stuff, they'll start to take up more and more space. So that's just something to generally keep in mind. Um, you'll notice down here, it also says that it's indexing. Uh, a lot of the time Android Studio is gonna be working through different things to index and get things set up. So again, uh, just be patient with Android Studio. It will eventually start to run the things that you need it to run. So this at least gives you a good idea about um, how we can install the environments that we'll be able to test with. Um, in the next video, we'll take a look at how we can use ADB to um, shell into a device. And we'll also take a look at how we can uh, then install the applications that we want to work with in these videos. And then from there, we'll dive right into the vulnerability analysis and take a look at the different types of common vulnerabilities that exist. Uh, take a look at how to analyze applications and figure out what common vulnerabilities we might want to look at. So that's what will be what we take a look at in the next video. Um, for now, you've got your emulator set up, you've got your environment set up, so you should be ready to progress on.